I still think they're going to be a really good team. But the thing is about this team compared to other years of the Warriors, they're not as deep and they got older. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 7th edition of the TV on Basketball Podcast with your host, TV. Hope your day is going awesome and thank you guys so much for clicking on to watch or listen to today's podcast. Before we start, I have to plug my other platforms. Remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for updates on the podcast and for other content. If you're on YouTube, remember to like, share, and subscribe. That'd be highly appreciated. And for all you podcast listeners, remember to subscribe and leave a review if you're on Apple. And for the other ones, you know, on Spotify, Anchor, or Podbean, just to con- just continue to show your support in any way possible. I have a really great show lined up for you guys. It's basically going to be based around me just previewing each of the West teams before we head into this NBA season. Because right now we sit on, what, December 7th? We are less than a week away from the... NBA preseason starting and the NBA season starting up in this on December 22nd. So if you guys are excited, come join with me on this journey. Um, you show your support on the podcast. That'd be very much appreciated. And yeah, it's going to be a really great season ahead. Have some good guests lined up for you over the next few weeks. And yeah, I'm just really excited to talk about basketball. I'm basically going to be um, ranking my West teams from, I believe it's going to be 15th all the way down to one. So I'm basically going to be giving like um, my standing predictions and where I think the record's going to be around. So, yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this. And, yeah, it's going to be a lot to talk about. So, let's get right into it. Like I said, I'm going to be starting out who I think is going to be in 15th and who I think is going to be um, the best member, regular season team in the West. This doesn't mean they're going to be my finest favorites, but I just want to make that disclaimer. So, let's get right into this. And,. For me, the last place spot in the West was kind of really easy. I have the OKC Thunder coming in at number 15th in the West. I see them having a 16 and 56 type season. Their most valuable player is Shea Gildas Alexander. And their player to watch this season is Darius Baisley. The Phoenix, uh, I almost said the Phoenix Suns. The Oklahoma City Thunder last year. I'm going to be completely honest with you. They caught lightning in the bottle there. Adding Chris Paul, they thought, oh, we're not going to be that great of a team. We're not going to be competing as much. It's just good if we just develop these young players. That wasn't the case because they brought in Gallinari. They brought in Chris Paul. They still have Steven Adams around. And they shocked the world, to be completely honest, and and went on this awesome run last year, placing, I believe, fifth in the West and taking the Rockets to seven games in the first round. Something none of us would have predicted at the beginning of the season. But this year, this year's different. They got rid of all of them. I believe there's very few people that are returning from last year's team. They even got rid of Steven Adams, which is a huge blow to OKC fans, I know. But this is the rebuild that was meant to happen last year, but it just came a year late. Shigildas Alexander expect to have a massive season here. Darius Baisley, I think, showed them really good flashes. Um, coming off the bench a lot last year. And I think that this season could be a big breakout season for him. And I think that really should be the goal for this Oklahoma City Thunder team. Next season, I believe the number one draft prospect is Cade Cunningham. And they, if the Thunder tank enough, I mean, they could just get that guy. And apparently this guy's going to be an absolute monster. So, yeah, this next year's draft looks like to be a lot more juicier than this year's draft. So it would probably be the best for the Thunder to tank and just focus on the young guys. Even looking at their lineup just for this upcoming season, like who's going to finish games? I mean, probably Baisley, probably Shea. The rest are kind of up in the air. Probably Lou Dort as well, but yeah, the, the Thunder and their infinite first round picks over the next few years should be looking to just you know be bad this year and maybe just start maneuvering around next year. And I think that this team probably down the line would be really good, but right now, they're trash. They're just absolute trash. And I think that that's going to be um, how they will go this season. Let's go on to number 14th in the West. And I have the Sacramento Kings placing um, 14th in the West next season. I believe they're going to go somewhere in the range of 24 and, and 48. Right now, they're 
Um, their best player is De'Aaron Fox. And their player to watch this year is Marvin Bagley. I mean, the Kings got better. I, I, I would say that confidently. They did get better. They drafted Tyrese Halliburton. They brought in Hassan Whiteside to kind of fill that gap at the center position just in case Bagley gets injured again. And they don't have a horrible roster. The problem is that the rest of the West got better. <laughs> I think that is really all that comes down to is just the West just got better. And the Kings are just so behind the power curve at this point in terms of how like where their roster should be. They did a really good job bringing back De'Aaron Fox. Although a lot of people want to complain about the contract, it's something that they just had to get done. So, you know, good on them for making that move done. But they're just not good enough. They're just clearly not good enough. And I don't know if they should be tanking, but they should at least just try and see, like, who's going to be there for the future. Try to get Marvin Bagley healthy because that's one of the most important things that they have to do. Make sure that he can um, try to fulfill that number two um, expectation. And just try and just get better. You're you're not going to make it in in this loaded West. So you just have to just show that there's some improvement there. And ultimately just find an identity. Last year, they, like two years ago, they were like number one in pace. And it looked like they were going to kind of build off that with the young guys. Last year, they completely digressed from that. I think they, they, they just barely cracked the top 20. And they just need to find an identity this year. And hopefully, you know, after the mistakes that Luke Wallen made last year, hopefully he could... You know, reprehend those mistakes. Because I think that although this team is probably going to finish near dead last in the West, they're not bad. And I just think that they just need to just show some sort of promise. So, number 14th, I have the Sacramento Kings. One last point before we um, go off. They're going to really need to get Marvin Bagley back because they missed out on Luka Doncic. And he's already looking like he's probably going to be a top five player in the league this year. So, yeah, kind of rough on that behalf. Let's move on to number 13th in the West, and I have the San Antonio Spurs coming in that position. I believe them to have a 28-44 and 44 record this year, their most valuable player being De- um, DeMar DeRozan, and their player to watch this year um, being Lonnie Walker the fourth. I mean, if the Spurs made the play-in, I wouldn't be totally shocked, I wouldn't be totally surprised, but... Like I said with the Kings, I mean, they're an okay team, but they're just they're just way behind a lot of these West teams. I don't think a team led by DeMar- DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge is going to finish dead last in the West, and I think that they will still be competing to a certain degree. Not at a high level, but to a certain degree. That's why I, I was like, maybe they'll make the play-in tournament if, you know, things go well for them. But I don't see that happening. I really do not see that happening. Obviously, they still have one of the best coaches in the league in Greg Popovich, and they deserve to have some benefit of the doubt um, coming into this season. I mean, they they just missed out last year in the West. But there's just so many teams like in the West who kind of know like what they want to do or just are just more talented than Spurs. That's all it really comes down to. I don't see their defense improving a whole lot this year. And they're just going to continue having those problems. I mean, you're, severe, you're severely limited with DeMar DeRozan and Marcus Aldridge. At this point in their careers being your top guys. So yeah it's going to be probably another rough season for Spurs fans. But I think kind of like the Kings. Just try and get some of your young guys a lot more minutes. And hopefully you can figure out what you want to do going in the future. Because I like people like Derek White. Lonnie Walker the fourth. Um, DeJounte Murray. I am a big fan of those guys. But who are you going to keep around? Who are you going to trade? That's what they should figure out um, this season. Before we move on, there was some news coming out of the San Antonio Spurs camp, most specifically DeMar DeRozan. Apparently on November 18th, um, like around that time, someone broke into DeMar DeRozan's house and, and entered his um, one of his kids' room. I think it was his daughter's. And DeMar DeRozan walked into, his, walked into a room, saw the intruder there, and completely chased him out. And for people who don't know about DeMar DeRozan, that guy is about that life. This guy, before being in the NBA, was one of the top members of, um, like, one of the, the Compton gangs. I believe they're called the Crips, if I am not mistaken. So he's about that life. So if you're trying to mess with DeMar DeRozan, he ain't down for that. He has his, like, he has a following behind him. And he is not going to back down. He really isn't. He, knowing him from the Toronto Raptors, like, he's not going to back down from any verbal exchange and stuff like that. He is, he's about that, man. I would not test him, so... 
I mean, I'm glad everything is okay, but the man should have known better. And yeah, DeMar DeRozan, man, just do not mess with that guy for sure. Let's move on to number 12 in the West. And I'm going to be talking about a team who almost made the playoffs last year. But this year, in the loaded West, I don't see them making it really higher than 12. And that is the Memphis Grizzlies. I have them going 34 and 38. Their most valuable player being John Moran. And their player to watch being Justice Winslow. JJJ being hurt is going to really help them in the beginning of the season. JJJ being Jaron Jackson Jr., and him being hurt in the bubble, I believe that happened right before the playoffs started. I don't think he's going to be coming back um, by the start of the season. I'm assuming, if anything, he'll make it around maybe February, March-ish. And by that time, I think the Grizzlies are just going to be way too far behind. And I don't think they're a bad team. That's the problem with a lot of these teams in the West. Like, the Grizzlies, if you put them in these, they probably could be competing for a playoff spot. That's not happening in this loaded Western Conference. And John Morant's going to get better. I expect him to have a really big season, probably averaging over 20 points, maybe over 7 assists. I, th- I expect a really good year out of him. But it's going to be, it's just that Jaron Jackson injury is really just going to hurt them, especially early on, which is going to set them back. And again, they're just um, cursed with the fact that they just don't have enough talent compared to the rest of the West. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Justice Winslow. Um, coming into that lineup because I think he will be a very good, you know, secondary ball handler beside um, John Morant because, honestly, like, people kind of forget that he was actually a pretty good player for the uh, Miami Heat back in the day. Even when he was with the, um, I mean, I, I think yeah, he just played for the Miami Heat his whole career, and he, I just think he's, like, a pretty good player. You know, he can handle the ball. He has the defensive capabilities. I think he could serve to be really good for them. But that's just not enough to make it in the West. Having someone like Justice Winslow, obviously players like Dylan Brooks as well, and you know Grayson Allen coming off the bench, Jonas Valanciunas, it's just not enough. And the Grizzlies, sadly, after nearly making the playoffs last year, I don't see them even making it to the play-in tournament this year. Let's move on to the next team in the West. And um, the final team I have that is barely going to miss the um, NBA play-in is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I project them to have a even 500 record, 36 and 36. Their MVP being Carl Anthony Towns and their player to watch being Anthony Edwards. I just think the Timberwolves are kind of one year away and to like kind of like make this thing work because although they are they have a talented roster, D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley, I just think they just kind of need a year to gel before you can really see the fruits of their labor. They also brought in players like Ed Davis, a nice um, veteran piece. Jared Culver is still on that roster. Hopefully he can show out some more. They re-signed Michael, Mike Beasley, Malik Beasley um, to that big contract. He's kind of in a lot of news lately. I'm not going to be going too much into that. Um, and they just have like a pretty good roster. I mean, they definitely got better from last year. Having Ricky Rubio on the team as well, bringing him back. It's just, I just think it's just not, like, they're just not there yet. I want to see some, you know, good things out of Anthony Edwards. Hopefully the D-Lo to Carl Anthony Towns connection that everyone has been clamoring to see will finally work out this season. But, like I said, the rest of the teams in the West is kind of, um, the rest is kind of stacked this year. And this team, with a lot of question marks coming into the season, I just don't think, I can trust like them at this moment. Maybe with a year under the belt, we could see a little something. But right now, I just do not have them making the playoffs. So they're going to be one of those fun teams to watch, though. You should definitely if um, check them out, especially if they're on national TV. I don't think they have many national TV games, but they should be a definitely like one of those teams where you know if you have league pass or something, you should go check them out because Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, and D'Angelo Russell. All young guys, all with a lot of promise. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns being a um, a superstar type player as well. I think it's going to be a very fun team this year. But I'm not going to really give my judgments, judgments on them until next year. But right now, I just have them missing out on the play-in. Now let's go into those play-in spots. Because this is where it gets kind of hard. Because making this Western Conference um, standings 
was so, so difficult. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, there's some teams here. There's a team here which a lot of people are going to be surprised that I don't have making the playoffs, which I mean the top eight seeds. But to be honest, they could still be a threat if if um, things go well for them. And it's the same thing with this team. I mean, it was hard for me because they did get better, um, my number 10 seed. But I just, I just, just, there's just still too many question marks with this team where I can't really put them higher. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about the New Orleans Pelicans. I have them going 37-35 and 35 this year with their best player being Zion Williamson and their player to watch this year being Lonzo Ball. And like I said with the, um, with the Minnesota Timberwolves, they have the tools to be a good team. I mean, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, they brought in Eric Bledsoe, they have Steven Adams. They have a good up and down roster. But I'm just worried about the fit. There's not a lot of shooting. I really don't know how they're gonna if they're gonna have Eric Bledsoe off the bench, or they're gonna have Lonzo Ball off the bench. I'm not sure. Because JJ Riddick needs to be in that starting lineup because they need some form of shooting. And I was kind of confused like coming into the season because I really thought that the New Orleans Pelicans were gonna go kind of all in with Zion as the small ball five, but you know, maybe they'll end games with that or something. But right now, I mean, it just I just I'm just worried about how all things are gonna fit around. I mean, they really want to keep Steven Adams to help out with Zion. I mean, the guy who looks like he's like freaking thirty five, but he's twenty seven. Um, he, they signed him for another two years, and I just don't think there's just enough shooting on our roster for them to do to be really successful. Will they? If things go well, is it very possible for them to make the playoffs? A hundred percent. I really do think that this they have the talent to be a top eight seed in the West, but just because I have a lot more question marks about this team than I do kind of like certainties, I just have them being in the 10th place seed. Maybe they kind of like the Timberwolves, they need another year round. Maybe seeing a full year of, of Zion Williamson could really help that case. But as of right now, I mean, just looking up and down the roster, I mean, they have a few shooters like, you know, JJ Redick, um, Etuan Moore, Brandon Ingram is not bad himself, but at the same time, we just need to see kind of how they will gel together next year. And that is still, honestly, a big question mark going forward. So, yeah, I think they're still going to be a good team. I mean, Zion Williamson is a pretty a damn good player. He's a damn good player who looks like he could be a superstar in this league. And with Brandon Ingram coming off a most improved season, you only expect him to, like, continue with that production. But I just, the fit still kind of worries me. And although they may have a, a winning record, they're just going to miss out on the top eight. That's how crazy I think this West is going to be this year. There's so many good um, teams that you're going to see some um, teams with pretty good records just not make the play the playoffs, and that's going to be highly unfortunate. Let's move on to the ninth seed in the West, and I have the Houston Rockets. Yes, the Houston Rockets coming in the ninth seed in the West. And I don't think they're going to have a horrible season. I have them going 40 and 32 this season. I have them going 40 and 32. Their MVP this season has to be going to be James Harden, and their player to watch this year is obviously going to be John Wall. Like I said, this team is a good team. John Wall and James Harden, I think is good enough to make the to make the playoffs. I really do. But I just think that there's just too many moving pieces. And uh, just coming in just from all over the place that it's just going to be a mess of a season for the Houston Rockets, in my opinion. Bringing in John Wall, bringing in DeMarcus Cousins. Um, Christian Wood was a really good addition. Hopefully he does well here. But having a whole new management, a whole new coaching staff, I just don't think like the Rockets are kind of fully there. Not just their players, just their organization of like what do they want to do and what are their goals for this upcoming season. And you can just tell that a lot of people aren't, like, fully committed. Because there were reports coming out yesterday that James Harden hasn't been reporting to any of his indiv- um, individual workouts yet. And training camp started five days ago, and he hasn't reported yet. Same thing with P.J. Tucker. Um, we don't know what's happening with P.J. Tucker, but we've seen what's happening with James Harden. He was at a little baby's birthday party. And apparently he was at a strip club yesterday when the NBA was announcing that, you know, being in clubs and bars during the NBA season was being banned. And that just kind of shows, like, what the Houston Rockets are right now. They're just not a focused group of players. And there's just a lot of miscommunication because 
even like when John Wall had his introductory press conference with the Houston Rockets, they asked him, "Do you expect James Harden to be there?" And he's like, "Yeah, I hundred percent expect him to be here and like be like a teammate of mine this upcoming season." And James Harden <laughs> posted on his story, like, you know, that emoji where, like, people, like, that cringe emoji where people go like this, like, ugh. I mean, he did that, like, literally right after the press conference. So, I don't know, man. There's just so many, like, um, moving pieces with this team. There's just so much kind of uncertainty that I just don't think it's just, I just think it's going to be a mess of a season. And funnily, and the funny thing is, I think that 40 and 32 is going to be a mess of a season. But I just think that with, like, a lot of more stable franchises ahead of them, they're just not going to be able to um, make it to, like, the initial playoff spot. So, yeah, the Houston Rockets coming in ninth. Um, that's going to be, like, one of my more bold predictions. But, anyway, for any team that's going to face them as the eighth seed, they should still fear them. I mean, they do have a perennial MVP candidate in James Harden on their team. And if, J- and if John Wall can be, you know, 80 or 90% of the player he was back in Washington... Who knows what they could accomplish, but at the same time, I just really just don't like the outlook of this roster going forward. And I would not be surprised if they made a trade before a trade deadline with James Harden. Let's move on to the number 8th seed. And in this position, I have the Phoenix Suns. I have them going 42-30. and 30. Their MVP is going to, going to be Devin Booker, and their player to watch this year is the Andre Aiden. This CP3 trade really put them over the top for me um, over the Houston Rockets. They showed a lot of promise that in the bubble going 8-0. Although not making the playoffs, they came as close as they possibly could. And now with the addition of CP3, with the addition of adding um, Jay Crowder to their team as well, I really do think that this is a playoff team. Maybe they'll just barely edge the Rockets, but I just think that this is a good team. And a lot of people are going to benefit from, you know, Chris Paul being on that team. Devin Booker, that just relieves a lot of the ball handling abilities. And the one guy I want to talk about here is the Andre Aiden. And he apparently, in his press conference yesterday, he's saying that he was super excited when that Chris Paul trade um, um, actually came to fruition. Because um, he was, like, super excited to play with him. And apparently he was jumping up and down, like, with excitement to play with him. And I think that Chris Paul, like I said, is going to help this team a lot. But I think the difference with them being kind of a fringe playoff team to go into the next level has to be the Andre Aiden's play. He has put up good stats over his first few seasons as an NBA player. And if you want to see kind of like my full analysis on DeAndre Aiden, go to my Instagram page. I did a Let's Talk About Him last week. And I, I basically kind of like what I said was, look, he put up the numbers over his first two seasons. Now it's time for him to take it to the next level. Because he was in that draft with Luka Doncic. And he was kind of the consensus number one overall pick. Most to the fact that he was a uh, NCAA player. And teams are still scared to draft EuroLeague players number one. But Luka Doncic has already kind of went from here to here. And DeAndre Aiden, he kind of like leveled out here. And I think with Chris Paul on the team, we're going to need to see a big jump. And if that jump comes, I mean the Phoenix Suns team is just going to go like, next level good. Because DeAndre Aiden is a good basketball player. There's no reason to think that he isn't. But he just needs to show that improvement this season um, in terms of just, you know, being that top-tier center that everyone expected him to be. So, yeah, I have the Suns coming in at that eighth seed, but I think a lot of their success has to rely on DeAndre Aiden's growth and, like, how good he could do next season. Because we know what Chris Paul's going to be able to do. We know what Devin Booker's going to be able to do. DeAndre Aiden is kind of like the big que- in the question mark in the sense where is he as good as a lot of people thought he's going to be? Or is he just going to be kind of like a solid NBA center giving you 17 and 10 every night? Because those are not really, you know, superstar type numbers. Let's see if he's going to be able to bring it in next year. And yeah, the Suns are going to be one of just those teams that everyone's going to want to watch. Especially here in the se- early in the season to see how they're going to do. They haven't made the playoffs in 11 years and I think that this year they're finally going to be able to do it. We're going to move on to the 7th seed in the West and... We're going to be talking about the Utah Jazz. I have them going 45-27, and 27, the MVP being Donovan Mitchell, and their player to watch this year being Mike Conley. The thing about the Jazz that people really do forget about is that they took the Nuggets to seven, ga- to seven games, a team that made it to the Western Conference Finals. They were 3-1 up on them, 
And they did this, you know, through all that COVID drama between, you know, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And they also did it without a player that no one really thinks about, but he's extremely important to that team. Boyan Bogdanovich. I mean, he was, what, a 20-point per game score for them last year. And the only reason he couldn't play in the bubble was because he had shoulder surgery um, beforehand. So they were missing one of their top shooters. He's back this year. And honestly, they, they got better. I mean, Derek Favors comes back, um, a fan favorite in Utah. He's really going to improve their defense, especially off the bench. Mike Connolly, a full season of health, hopefully for him. And they just have a really good roster. I honestly believe that if things honestly go well for them, they could be a top four seed in the West. But this West is so unpredictable um, in the sense where we don't know kind of like how good or bad these teams are going to be. And if a lot of these teams are good, I mean, it's going to be like seedings are really going to be um, defined by the margin. So, yeah, this team is going to be a really good team again. But I just think that um, other teams in, like at the moment are better. And I just have them really just coming in seventh. Like I said, the player to watch this year is being is going to be Mike Conley because what type of Mike Conley are we going to get? Because regular season Mike Conley be, uh, pre-bubble wasn't very good. He was injury um, plagued and he really just could like didn't show that he was the Mike Conley of the Memphis Grizzlies. But he showed flashes of that in the bubble. Yes, he had like a kid um, which kind of like um, took out some games, especially like going into the playoffs. But after he came back, he looked like he was a like he was like um, in really good shape, and that he you know was playing really good basketball for the Utah Jazz. So, what type of Mike Conley are we gonna be getting this year? And I think it's gonna that's gonna really def- like um, determine the Utah Jazz success. Um, how good he could be this upcoming season. So, this team is gonna be a very good team. I know it feels weird saying that being the seventh seed, but they're gonna be really good. They're gonna be a fun team to watch. I have the Utah Jazz at 7. Let's move on to number 6. And number 6 in the West this year for me is going to be the Golden State Warriors. Their MVP is going to be Steph Curry. And their player to watch this year is Andrew Wiggins. Usually, if Clay was healthy, I would have them as a top 4 seed lock. But without Clay, that kind of changes things around here. I still think this team is going to be very good. Just because they have Steph Curry, just because they have a championship winning coaching staff, and with Draymond Green anchoring their defense and that pickup of James Wiseman, I still think they're going to be a really good team. But the thing is about this team compared to other years of the Warriors, they're not as deep and they got older. <laughs> and people don't want to, like, don't really want to talk about that, but this team got older. Draymond Green, people are going to be like, oh, with Curry back and stuff, he's going to be this, like, back to that, you know, perennial all-NBA Draymond Green. But that's just not the case. I mean, this guy is older. Uh, he definitely has kind of um, kind of dropped off over the past few years. And I just don't think like he, we're going to see like, the same type of Draymond that we did back in 2016, back in 2017. I just don't think like he is that type of player anymore. And that's going to hurt the Warriors because Steph Curry, I think, is, will be in MVP conversations and he's going to be putting up massive numbers. But Steph Curry putting up massive numbers can only take you so far. And I really have them probably as maybe a second round exit coming up this season. Just because they're not as deep. And they just are just not the world beaters that they used to be. And a lot of that's going to... And a lot of their success, again, Steph Curry's going to be great. I'm not doubting that. But there's a lot of questions marked by Andrew Wiggins. I mean, he's going to have to be the number two scoring option at this point. Um, Kelly Oubre is going to be good. I really think he's going to be a good player. Same with James Wiseman. And again, Draymond Green is just another one of those question marks. I mean, they have a good starting lineup, but I just don't think they're deep enough to um, be a top seed in the West. And it's it's just a different landscape than it was back when they were the world beaters. I mean, a lot of teams got better, and and a lot and, a, and you can argue that a lot of these teams are better than the Warriors at this point. So yeah, I mean, the Warriors is going to still be there. I mean, maybe people still have them as title contenders. I don't have them there anymore. But, you know, I, st- I still have them as a six seed. I'm still going to respect, you know, um, the Warriors and like all they've accomplished. But I just don't think they're going to be as high as many people think. 
Let's move on to my number f- um, five seed, and that is going to be the Dallas Mavericks. I have them going fifth in the West, having a record of 48-24. and 24. Their MVP being Luka Doncic, and their player to watch this season is Josh Richardson. I think a big part of the Mavs' success this year is that another year um, playing together with Luka and KP. KP is going to be out for probably the first two or three weeks of the regular season, but he will be back in like maybe mid to, I mean, beginning to mid January. And I just think that this team got better defensively, you know, adding players such as um, Josh Richardson, who's going to be a backward mate with um, Luka Doncic, which is going to be a very fun team to watch. I mean, I just think that a lot of this year's success is going to be that Luka's going to probably be an MVP candidate. I haven't, I'm going to be talking about kind of my uh, award predictions in um, my podcast next week. I just, just think that this team kind of got better in a sense where, you know, they have they brought back their, you know, scoring off the bench with Trey Burke and Jalen Brunson is going to be coming back from injury. They have better defenders at the big position, you know, bringing back Willie Cauley-Stein, still having a Maxi Kleber, and Dwight Powell coming back, back from injury is going to be massive for them coming um, this upcoming season. Having Josh Richardson, having, you know, still that shooting and Tim Hardaway Jr. and stuff like that. I just think that this is a really good roster up and down. And if KP, you know, can come back healthy and be, you know, that guy averaging 20 points a near um, 10 rebounds a game, I just think that this team could, like, really, like, this could be the start of their dynasty. I really do believe that. Luka Doncic, like Joe said in the last episode, is still scratching the surface of how good he could really be. And I think this is going to be just continuation on, like, just the legendary career of Luka Doncic already. And I think he's going to be kind of up there with the MVP candidates. And I just think that this team, you know, having a really good coaching staff, having one of the best players in the league in Luka Doncic, they're going to make some noise. And this could possibly be the start of, you know, that dominance that people have been kind of wanting out of the, the Dallas Mavericks, you know, with him and Chris House Porzingis. So, again, one of those teams are going to be just um, really good in a loaded West. But I think that they're going to have a really good season. And they have them coming in fifth. Let's move on to number four, and I think that this is going to be one of my boldest predictions of the season, but I have the Portland Trailblazers being the fourth seed in the West. I think they're going to go 49-25, and their best player being Damian Lillard, and their player to watch being Harry Giles. Like I said, this is going to be like my hottest take of the season. I really do think that Lillard is just going to continue um, putting up those massive, massive numbers. I mean... You saw at the end of last year when the Blazers were kind of like far behind in terms of, you know, playoff seeding and stuff like that. Damian Lillard just led them to the promised land and just took them to the playoffs, you know, putting up massive performance after massive performance. And I think that, you know, with Damian Lillard putting up these big numbers, I also do think the Trailblazers put a better team around him. And I think that this is going to be like a, a better team that no one really talks about. They brought in Robert Covington, you know, part of that trade on draft night. They still have CJ McCollum. They have a healthy um, Yusuf Nurkic. Hopefully, Zach Collins can come back soon. I'm not sure about his timetable for his injury. They brought in Harry Giles, who I said was going to be a player to watch. And if Zach Collins can't make it for the beginning of the season, it's going to be really interesting to see how Harry Giles, you know, performs at um, that big man position because he was the number one recruit coming out of high school um, a few years ago. And. He hasn't really found his putting in the NBA due to injuries. He finally is going to have his opportunity here. It's going to be really exciting to see how he plays. They also just brought in a lot of, you know, good, lengthy players to help on the defensive end. You know, with Derrick Jones Jr., they brought back Rodney Hood. And I just think that this is probably just the best um, Trailblazers lineup, even better probably than the Brandon, R- Brandon Roy or Marcus Aldridge days. I just think that this team is going to be a really good team. Especially in the regular season, they're going to put up a lot of points, be very, very entertaining. And I just think they're just going to be have a really good season this year. And a lot of people forget, I mean, just two years ago, they made the conference finals in the West. Yes, they got <laughs> swept by the Golden State Warriors, but they still made it there. They still did. And I think that last year, you know, with all the injuries and stuff, was kind of an anomaly type of season. But this year, I think they're going to have a really good year. And I have them going being fourth in the West. We're going to go to my number third seed in the West. And 
for this position, I have the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers coming third in the West. This brings me back to my disclaimer. I don't think they're going to, I still think they're probably going to be title favorites and stuff like that. But in the regular season, I have them coming third. I see them having a, four, a 53 and 19 type record with their most valuable player being LeBron James and their player to watch being Montrez Harrell. It feels weird to say this, but the Lakers got better. <laughs> I mean, they're the defending champions, and they somehow got better this year. You know, bringing in Wesley Matthews as a honestly a really good replacement for Danny Green, and a lot cheaper. <laughs> bringing in Montrez Harrell, who was the defending reigning Sixth Man of the Year. You have the second place um, finisher in that category, and Dennis Schroeder. I just think that this team just got a lot better, and. With LeBron and AD still, you know, leading the charge, they should still be out there as probably the best team in the West. The only reason I have them coming third um, compared to second or first is that they just came off of a grueling series against the Miami Heat. And they've been kind of done dirty by the schedule this year. I mean, they only have like two months break. I believe it was like 71 days (laughs) basically break here. And I think that rest is kind of going to be a common theme here for the Los Angeles Lakers. And rightfully so, man. I mean, LeBron going into, what, his 16th, 17th season or something like that and still playing at probably the best player in the league type level is absolutely insane. It's insane. And he just needs to kind of just get that rest. And as long as this team is healthy come playoff time and has, like, some sort of home court advantage, whether it's in the first or second round, I think they're going to be good, man. I think they're still going to be, like, a really good team. They, they might not have a better record than the other two in front of me, but I still have them as being, you know, just top contenders in terms of just um, going for the NBA championship. I even forgot to mention that they brought back Marcus Gasol, man. I mean, this team is deep. This team has the stars. They have everything you need in terms of having a championship contender, and they're going to be right in the thick of things again this year. So, yeah, number three in the West, I have the defending champion, Los Angeles Lakers. Coming in at number two, I have their crosstown rivals. I have the Los Angeles Clippers coming in second in the Western Conference. I have them going 56 and 16, their most valuable player being Kawhi Leonard, and their player to watch this year being Lou Williams. They ended last year in disastrous um, in a disastrous catastrophe. And I think this year they're done being clowned at. And they're going to really put into work to be a good team. They got rid of Doc Rivers, who um, kind of like didn't fail to make adjustments throughout the playoffs. They brought in Ty Lue, who I think will probably be better in terms of like holding these star players accountable. And you still have, you know, two arguably top 10 players in the league in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Kawhi probably being a top 5 player and Paul George probably being, you know, borderline top 10. And they have a good team around them. I mean, they still have Lou Williams. They still have Patrick Beverly. They brought in Serge Ibaka, and I don't know if he's better than Montrezl Harrell, but he's definitely a better fit for this team. I just think this team is really good. They still have Marcus Morris. Um, they brought in Luke Kennard. They still have a pretty deep team. And I think after having that last year of embarrassment, they don't want to go through that again. I really don't think they do. And they're going to really focus up and try and you know be that team that everyone expected them to be last season, this season. Now, there's a lot of, you know, um, kind of shots being thrown at uh, around the Clippers organization, you know, with um, um, Kawhi Leonard, um, not with Kawhi Leonard, with Paul George basically saying that, you know, having Ty, um, Ty Lue here, I think will definitely change the culture. Doc Rivers kind of firing back saying, you know, Ty Lue was here all, was here all of last year. Like, what do you think is going to really change that much? So I just think that there's going to be like still like some of that little, um, you know, kind of tension there. But at the same time, I think all of these guys are going to end up kind of fighting for the same goal at this point. And after a year of experience together, you know, there's no excuse. There really is no excuse. And for Steve Ballmer, the organization, I mean, they need to win now. This is possibly the last year in Paul George's contract, possibly the last year in Kawhi Leonard's contract. So they're going to show that they either have to, you know, make the finals, show that they really are contenders, or at the uh, honestly just try and win a championship. That should be the goal here. And for Paul George, who said the last year wasn't a championship bust. Well, if that isn't, then this year is definitely championship or bust. They need to show that um, 
the Clippers are no longer a joke and that they are, you know, one of, a, a, as great of a team as we thought they were last year. There's still going to be questions on how good they are, but I think that this year they're going to prove a lot of players wrong, or so a lot of, of fans wrong. And you can see a kind of a, a revenge tour type season for Paul George, and I just think that they're going to be kind of they're going to get back to that point where they're going to be just a really good team in general. So, in my second place position, I have the Los Angeles Clippers, and in my number one position, and this may surprise a lot of you guys. But the, my number one team in the regular season for the West, remember, regular season, the Denver Nuggets. I have them coming first in the West, going 60-12 and 12 this year. The MVP being Nikola Jokic, and the player to watch being Jamal Murray. I just think this year that this is going to kind of be their year in terms of the regular season. They finally started putting it all together last year in the playoffs. And I think that they had a perfect type of layoff in the sense where they still got some total rest. I think they still got like a good amount of rest. But I think they still kind of have that momentum coming from, you know, that Western Conference Finals run that it will be able to carry over to um, this um, season. Jokic usually is like kind of starts the season really slow. But I think that he's going to have just a great year all around, possibly putting up MVP type numbers. We'll have to wait and see. You know, they still have a really deep team with, you know, Gary Harris um, being fully healthy, Will Barton coming back, which is actually a pretty big plus. The emergence of Michael Porter Jr., hopefully they give Bobo minutes, you know. They still have, you know, Jermichael Green. They still have the whole Mills Savannah team. I still think it's a deep team. I still think it's a really good team. And I think they're just going to put in mad work in the regular season. The biggest question mark here is going to be Jamal Murray. Because last season... If you just look at the season averages, I mean, pretty good season, you know, um, 18 points per game, you know, a couple of assists, a couple of rebounds. I think he put up, like, oh, pretty good numbers, probably his best season as a pro. But his, like, his value really did skyrocket in the playoffs, putting up those massive numbers. I think he was averaging over 27 points a game. Like, this guy was absolutely insane in the playoffs, and he played, like, a top five point guard. But, and this is a big but, and Joe's not going to like this. <laughs> Joe, if Critical Condition is watching this or listening to this, you're not going to like this because he really does bash on the Nuggets. And, you know, they they just caught lightning in the bottle in terms of the NBA bubble, and they weren't able to, you know, he doesn't think he's going to have near that type of success this year. Well, a lot of that's going to hinge on Jamal Murray because is he that top five caliber point guard? Is he, like, that good of a player? A lot of their season is going to be based around that. And I think that he is going to be able to do it. He's going to prove a lot of people wrong. And him and Jokic are just going to be a deadly, a deadly duo this coming season. And I think they're going to do really well. And that will lead them to the kind of the first seed in the West. A lot of people are writing them off even, like, uh, um, last year as well. And I think that this year they're going to try to prove to the rest of the league that you know, we are we should be considered as one of those elite teams in the West. We have the camaraderie, we have the talent, and they're gonna probably show it this year, this upcoming season. But yeah, those are my predictions. Um, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, what you thought? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know for sure. And always just shoot me a DM. I'm down to talk these type of things. I'm down to debate this type of stuff. And yeah, I'm just like I'm just really excited to see like what this up season, um, upcoming season has for these guys, especially the West. Like I said, they are absolutely loaded, and I just cannot wait to see what type of success they will have this year. But I think this is where we're gonna end today's episode. Thank you guys for watching or listening. Remember to show all um, show love on all the podcast channels. Like, share, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for great content gonna have another video out this wednesday me reacting to either a video article or doing a quiz and on friday i have a guest coming onto the show so be on the lookout for that remember to um, support in all ways possible you know like i said follow on all the social medias show love on youtube and on all the podcast networks i really do appreciate all of you but yeah this is where we're gonna end it hope you all have a fantastic day take it easy guys peace